Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, just to uh, touch up what we've done so far, you know, we just finished up our walkthroughs uh, prior to practice. Uh, we'll be practicing inside today, uh, just due to the weather, uh, to get a clean practice for first and second down passing game, uh, as well as the run game. So that'll be that'll be good there. Uh, likely be outside the next two days. Uh, the weather looks like it's gonna gonna be good for us. Um, similar to what it's going to be on game day, maybe a touch colder, but uh, go from there. But uh, guys are doing well. Guys are doing great. Really working on what they've uh, wanted to improve on. That's going to be big for individual today. Uh, the fundamentals and techniques that we talk about uh, for each position and each guy. So that's going to be important. Um, obviously, we're going up against a really good opponent. Um, the guys are excited about that opportunity uh, going forward for this week and uh, look forward to the preparation as we get going. Uh, one injury or, or uh, update uh, for you guys um, is uh, Justin Fields is ill uh, today and will not practice. Um, he's day to day. Uh, he's feeling better uh, day to day. So we'll uh, go from there. I'm not going to answer questions about uh, when, where, what, all that other stuff. He's just day to day. And uh, he's, he's uh, we'll list it as illness uh, for today and we'll go from there. And uh, he's feeling better every single day and we'll go uh, as we go through the week. Uh, with that, I will open up to questions. Okay, you sound like uh, he's improving, and so are you not particularly concerned about his availability for Sunday? Yeah, I, I think it's day to day. I think he is improving. I think he's feeling better, um, and uh, it's looking positive. And you're anticipating having him Sunday at yes. all? Okay. How long has he been feeling? Sir? Yeah, it's just day to day. Day to day, is, uh, and uh, we'll uh, go from there. things that they did that maybe we can apply for our future success, maybe a blueprint to follow? I know you're going to do things your own way, but do you, do you take anything from No, I think it's important to look back at history, um, not only recent history, but, you know, history, uh, you know, ways back. You could look at a lot of different teams that have struggled and then had success. Uh, Dallas Cowboys when they were 1-15, you know, the Oakland Raiders way back. I mean, you could look and see all the teams that have, have been able to flip the script and, and, and do that, and you know, and Philadelphia has certainly done that, you know. So going from that season they had, uh, then to Nick's first year, then Nick's second year. So, um, yeah, you can always look at that. And you know, it's always you always have to go, go through some adversity. Obviously, you got to have schemes that are good, um, that are simple, that you can repeat. Um, and then obviously the, the addition of players. You know, you can't. Uh, you got to have good coaching and good players to be able to win at a high rate. And uh, they've certainly done that. He stay engaged. Yeah, just staying engaged. Uh, you know, he, he is he is in the building, so he's he's engaged, and uh, he's you know uh, obviously uh, working through all the plays. You know, we got you know the uh, number of plays we always have on runs and passes that we have on first and second down, all the different things we do, and um, he's engaged there and learning those as we go, and he'll be fine. Yeah, Jonathan Gannon uh, obviously was with me in uh, Indianapolis. Uh, has done a really good job. Uh, tremendous coach, uh, tireless worker. Um, does a good job of mixing things up, and uh, you know how he's done an awesome job of uh, you know the roster there, um, and really uh, you know adding all those defense alignment. A lot of those guys are on one years. You know the backups that are I mean that used to be starters that are really good players. Of course, and uh, you know the edge rush. You know, uh, Adin Hassan and also Sweat on the outside. Those two players are really good pressure players, um, and they really create a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. You know, they're a lot of five down. So uh, you know, in nickel also in base. So they create a lot of create a lot of one-on-ones um, inside. You know, with Fletcher and you know and, and Hargraves, all those guys that are in there. So um, it's it's really and then they're able to you know put guys in coverage. You know, they have most guys, you know, they're able to play coverage, split safety, single high. Uh, they match tight in their, in their coverage, you know, more than most that play this system. Uh, but uh, Jonathan and his crew have done a nice job. What, what do you appreciate the most about what Brisker has been able to accomplish to this point this season? And when you guys gave him, you know, a short to-do list of things to try to improve on, for the remainder of the season, what were those specific? Yeah, uh, really for him, it's just about, you know, footwork. 
you know, his when he's down uh, low, you know, his footwork when he's when he's playing man, also when he's deep, you know, being able to run the alley and, and be able to create uh, the the angles he needs to, um, you know, to get the guy on the ground if the ball does come through there. Um, really, and for him, it's just about you know, continue to improve and do a really good job with his blitzing. You know, he's a really good blitzer. We like to send him a lot. Um, so. Yeah, he's he's. Uh, we're pleasantly surprised where he is. You know, where he's grown to, and every th- every time we've asked him to do something to get better at, he's done it. And uh, so we're excited where where this is going here in the next four games. And Brisker and Gordon have not had the uh, advantage of a big pass rush to play with, or a lot of established stars like guys who've come in before have had Hicks and Mac and players sure. like that. How is that? How has that increased the degree of difficulty for those guys as rookies to play? They don't really have a cushion. I mean. Uh, how, how is that, and, and how and and how does that uh, um, affect your judgment of, of what they've done based on you know being in that situation? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, you know, you got to really look at it. You, it's got to look, you know, you got to look and see where where the pressure is coming from, and when and when we do have pressure, uh, how they hold up, and then when they when it does, it's not there, then they have to be able to hold up that way too. Um, so you get to evaluate the guys in terms of his athletic ability and space when time you know starts to go on the clock. You know, can he plaster? Can he stay alive in the play? You know, and can he stay with his man? Um, be it zone if you're plastering or if you're just playing man. So, um, those guys have done a good job of that. Uh, but uh, certainly, those are you're putting those situations. You know, uh, when you have rush, when you have rush, when you don't have rush. You know, it's it's you're always putting those situations. So we evaluate it that way. Do you think that by virtue of watching what Justin does every week, your defense has an appreciation for? How dangerous a running quarterback can be, and and how how can that help them against somebody like Hertz? No, it does help them. Um, you know, obviously we've played against Justin all through training camp, you know, and all the all through the competition periods we have even now, you know, because we compete uh, for certain periods um, during the week, and it's it's you know I, I see it as a benefit, you know, to be able to play against somebody like Justin. You know, he's such a dynamic player, you know, and and so is Jalen. You know, both guys are are guys that can get into the open space. You know, can break a pocket down if the if the coverage is is tight, and then run with the football to create first downs. So, um, you know, going against our guys certainly is going to going to benefit us. Do you guys do ones versus ones in practice? Yeah, yes, we do. We do we do certain competition periods every single week. So it might be a situation where it's a you know third down period or a two minute period. We we do that all the way through the course of the year. Um, we do it for. You know, two point plays, different situations. Uh, we do it for ten push ups. You know, for a group, I have to do push ups on both sides, so I always lose. But, uh, um, but that's the way it goes. Matt, during the off season, you talked about stretching David Montgomery's role this yeah. year. How how has that played out for you? It, it's been good. Um, it's been good. And, you know, you know, stretching his role was really referring to his passing. You know, pass catching and his route tree. Um, I think that's what I was referring to, and uh, he's done that. You know, he's done a good job of you know catching the ball out of the backfield. Uh, certainly, we want more production. You know, we always do for from our backs. You know, because we think it's a viable option to throw the ball to your tight ends and backs um, in the low part of the field. But um, but he's done a really good job. You know, and like we said, he's a different runner than than Khalil. You know, he's uh, you know more of a strong power slasher guy uh, that really breaks tackles and does a nice job leaning forward. And uh, he's grown that way, and he's continuing to do a good job. Uh, news came out yesterday, the, the passing of Mike Leach. Uh, did you have any interactions or memories with him coaching in the Big 12? And then what was it like trying to defend against that offense when it was kind of rising up? Yeah, so uh, we, I, I believe I want to say we played against some when I, early, early on in Mizzou. Uh, I was the D coordinator. He was the head coach at Texas Tech and the OC, of course, with you know the air raid and um, you know, I just want to first, you know, say to his family, you know, you know, my my deepest sympathies um, for such a young age, uh, but to lose a legend like that, uh, and he made me better. You know, the first time we played him, he beat us pretty good. You know, we got a chance to play him three or four more times after that during my course of career there. But what what did I learn from that was, you know, how to defend the spread. You know, how to defend uh, that tempo style and. Uh, and I, I became a better coach by going against him. So uh, I really appreciate him for that. Matt, you touched on it a little bit uh, with the depth guys. Linval Joseph, Sue, obviously big signings, big names, but they haven't really popped on the stat sheet yet in their like month plus with the team. Is, when you look, is there is there an impact beyond the box score that you're seeing with those those two guys? Yeah, it, it seems to me that that Jonathan's putting them in there in rundowns um, more. You know, certainly Lenville, you know, uh, obviously a big body that eats up a lot of space in there. Um, and then obviously Sue, 
you know, he's been playing more three technique. You know, Linville's been playing more zero. Uh, but it seems like he's doing that. And those guys are really good run defenders. And they can rush the passer, too. But, uh, you know, I think that's how he's utilizing them right now. So that's why you're not seeing him as much in the stat sheet. Um, because they have eight guys that are in there, sometimes nine they bring up to the game. And, uh, um, you know, they got the pass rushers uh, that are in there at that time. But, uh, again, those guys are dynamic players as well. When you're able to cycle through so many defensive linemen the way they do, what is the benefit of that to them? Uh, just freshness. You know, you're limiting uh, reps, you know, for the guys. And when it becomes a pass rushing down, then they're guys that, you know, can play first. They just come in on third down and passing situations, and you're just limiting reps. Um, so when guys have less reps, they are able to go harder, faster. Um, you know, he believes in the same principles we do, you know, in terms of the, them playing hard and their intensity and all those types of things that, uh, um, that they do. Matt, when, you're, when you're studying the Eagles offense, what are you finding most impressive about what Hurts is doing? Yeah, I, I think he's really clear and concise on his reads, you know, where he wants to go with the ball. Um, he, doesn't, he doesn't mess around with a lot of different, uh, you know, look here, look all, you know, over there. And, I think he does a really good job of knowing where the coverage is telling him to put the ball. And I think he delivers it on time. Um, he's, he's a very accurate passer, uh, throws a good deep ball. Um, and I think he's really running that offense you know, at, at a high rate. And, and the skill level that he's got around him, you know, with, you know, with getting their tight end back, you know, obviously that's, that's going to help them a lot. Um, and obviously the two, the two pass catchers, catchers are really good. And, and the other guys are good too. You know. they, they have a good stock of receivers, and the tight ends are, are good too. Man, in these final four games, what, what besides consistency, what about your defense do you want to see that you think will be the best indicator that you're making the progress towards next year that you want to see? I mean, there's pass rush, uh, things you know, things like that, uh, takeaways, yeah. third downs, whatever. Sure. Is there one thing you really want to see in the last four games you think that will really be an indicator that through this whole season you're going into 2023 with the Arrow? No, you just named them all, Mark. You had, you had them all. <laughs> You really did. I mean, so, you know, what I want to see really is, you know, the, the turnovers. You know, want that to increase, um, you know, because obviously we're not where we need to be. You know, so what would be a good goal for that? You know, we, ha we have set that goal, um, and we want to make sure we're doing a good job of that. We always want to win the ball. Um, situationally, we know we, we've fallen short a little bit, obviously, on third down defense. Um, so we want to have to win our one-on-ones, which entails your pass rush. You know, so we have to do a really good job with that as well. And then our run defense. You know, we've historically been a really good run defense, top ten in run defense, and sometimes top five, and sometimes number one. Um, so that has to improve. You know, so that just comes down to technique, fundamentals, and us got our guys doing their job with intensity. So you know, those things are all everything we're looking at are, are really those things. Will you tweak this defense in the last four weeks to see what you got, or is this basically what you've been? Meaning like personnel or scheme? Yeah, right. yeah personnel. Yeah. Um, not, I mean, just a little bit here and there. We'll see where guys are. We might put some guys in different positions, you know, along the defensive line. I think that's important to do to see what we have and, and, and those types of things. But, um, you know, the linebackers are, are, are status quo right now. And then getting our secondary a little bit healthier will certainly help us. Uh, but again, we always adjust the scheme a little bit and tweak it here and there to, to, to defend the offense. And uh, we're going to continue to do that. So. Six in a row, and you come out of the bye week facing a huge challenge in Philadelphia. How do you make sure you still have the attention of the room and that everybody is staying engaged in, in the process of what you guys are trying to go through? Yeah, I think you challenge the guys. You challenge them, and I know that the character of the room, we have great character. You know, we have great players in terms of with high character, and uh, those guys love to be challenged. And this is a big challenge for us, and uh, the guys are on it for you micro it down to the individual, so you challenge them that way, and then you put it to the unit. You know, so the unit's got their, everybody's got their goals, what they want to accomplish um, in the next four games, and certainly this playing these uh, opponents that we're playing um, in these last four games is certainly a big challenge, and I think the guys are up to the challenge. Okay. Yeah,